I joined Hitachi in the year 2000, so I've been around 13 and a half years. It was the height of the dot-com bubble, let's say, the boom. It was quite an interesting time to, to join. When we think about technology, one of the key problems that banks have is this whole aspect of know your customer. Who am I dealing with? So as we provide more services remotely uh, and what we call unattended transactions, um, it becomes more vital to really know who we're dealing with. So I think the whole, uh, the whole aspect of identification and verification of customers becomes quite important. So the way we've approached that is to use biometric as the way to authenticate a digital signature. So suddenly things that would normally require your handwritten signature in the branch, like a mortgage application, a loan application, perhaps a new account opening, you can take care of actually at the remote terminal. So it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. In Hitachi, we've been working for a number of years in trying to find uh, biometric tools which are really applicable in society. What our researchers came up with was based on vein biometrics, so the vein patterns inside the body. Everyone has a unique vein pattern in the same way that you have a unique iris pattern or unique fingerprint. We use what we call near-infrared light, which is harmless to the human tissue. So the scanner itself has two main components. It has a, a camera and it has a set of uh, LEDs which illuminate the finger when it's placed on the scanner. And we have a certain level of liveness detection. So first of all, you have to have living tissue. Uh, the second factor is that the whole technology is based on there being haemoglobin in the blood. The haemoglobin absorbs the infrared light and allows the imaging to take place. So if you don't have the haemoglobin, it's very difficult to make this image that you need to capture. It's pretty tough to cut off a, a finger because all the veins collapse, the blood runs out, and it's pretty difficult to get the image that you used to have when it was a live finger with blood pumping through it. It's always possible to uh, have criminality involved in any kinds of self-service environment. So there is a trick that some of our customers use to manage that situation. And we, we suggest to the bank to register what we call a stress finger. So what would happen is when the customer registers the third stress finger, if they were ever put under duress to make some kind of self-service transaction, they can put the third or the stress finger onto the scanner. And the, the bank can take some automatic evasive action, like show a message on the ATM, sorry, this machine is now out of service. Please try a different machine. And of course, every time the customer goes to an ATM and puts that finger, this could happen, and we'd hope the criminal would get bored and move on. I think from the perspective of individuals, we would all like to know that what we're doing is, I think, more secure. Uh, we hear many cases of uh, fraud in banking, in, in ATM transactions, in point of sale transactions that go wrong. When the individual perceives a real benefit, then I think technology can take off. And from our perspective, from banking perspective, I think many of us are nervous about using some channels. We're nervous about people standing behind us in the POS queue or the checkout in the supermarket because we know that our chip and pin data uh, can easily be, be viewed by somebody. So if we move to something more secure, I think in the end it can be seen as a benefit by people. People need simplicity, people need security, people need effectiveness and we can offer all of these things.